That's correct, yes. Uh, you know, you still have um, relatively decent growth in China and China is of course uh, the driving force when it comes to commodity prices and uh, despite the fact that we had huge amounts of investment in infrastructure and what have you, uh, there's still a long way to go. China is a big country and the demand for commodities will stay strong. Um, you know, sometimes it's sentiment driven, but uh, we still think the super cycling commodities is intact despite of the uh, uh, corrections that we have seen. But uh, I think it's going to continue from here. Uh, we don't think so. Uh, in this case, we're with the consensus, and I think the consensus is looking at the earliest date for tapering in March. Uh, first of all, uh, the Fed under Janet Yellen will be even more dovish than under uh, Ben Bernanke. And I think Janet Yellen seems to be of the opinion that the Fed can control anything. Uh, she actually talks about optimal control, which sounds scary a little bit. It sounds almost like a command and control economy, micromanagement and so on. But the Fed actually believes that they can have an influence on the real economy where in reality, this was not the case because uh, the contribution by the Fed, by QE, on the real economy has been minimal. However, it has been absolutely crucial for asset prices. We have a 90% correlation between the Fed, uh, the Fed's balance sheet, for instance, and the S&P 500. And if the Fed continues to extend its balance sheet, which even on the tapering will be the case, they will just buy fewer securities. We think that uh, equity prices can move higher even from here. I think so. Uh, central banks show no signs of changing the game because they're basically on a treadmill and it's very hard to get off. Again, tapering is not tightening and as long as central banks are um, expanding their balance sheet, and not only the Fed, we're talking about the ECB as well, who's talking a bit more dovish now because of the euro strength. We're looking at the Bank of Japan where, you know, QE will continue for at least another two years because they cannot afford to do otherwise. So we think equities are well supported. At the same time, uh, the outlook for bonds is probably a little bit more murky because at some point the interest rates will go up, long-term rates will go up, and of course that has implications on practically everything else, including commodities and of course including emerging markets first and foremost. Well, the Chinese Obviously, after the third plenum, it became clear that the Chinese are on the path of reform. The implementation, of course, will be difficult, but at least some of it will be implemented. And it is also clear that the shift from fixed asset investment to consumption will continue. And that means lower growth rates. I mean, not very low uh, growth, but no longer 10%, but maybe something more like 6 or 7%. And that, of course, has implications on industrial metals. As I said, I mean, China is the big user of, uh, of, of this type of commodities. And of course, uh, everything will depend on how the Chinese economy will, will hold up. We, we, as I said, we still think there is a lot of um, you know, investment spending to be done because China is, a, is a still a large country. But uh, we think that from now on, maybe the going in commodities will be a bit slower, but we still think the super cycling commodities is not over.